terms of this project, it would be for the developer to make the case for the very special circumstances. Until I see the detail of what that case is, um, I, I can't obviously comment or give a view about whether it's something we would support or would not support. Um, but developments of this nature, uh, and the other ones that I've seen elsewhere, there can be cases made uh, for demonstration of very special circumstances. Maybe not in every case, but in some cases. Until I see the detail, I can't really comment on whether this would pass those tests or, or not. Uh, but we would have to consider that at the time when it came before the planning committee. Do you want to speak, David? to um, propose that after a very, very um, you know, extensive debate that we put this to a, to a vote now at, at the proposal. Well, we haven't, we haven't concluded the process yet, Chris. We haven't concluded the process. No problem. No problem. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? David, thank you. Thanks for your, for your class. Thank you. I'd just like to, to make all members aware that David was, was called by Councillor Blakely and he was also called by the leader of the council. So I, I would hope that we've covered all the points that all the members <coughs> would like to have asked David. But I've got no intention of bringing him back. Is that, is that clear to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well. Um, Um, we now come to the summations, and I'd like to call uh, Chris Blakely back, please. Again, it's, it's the same five minutes, Chris, and I'll let you know when, when four minutes of that is concluded. Thank you, Chairman. that against the 
start next if planning permission is not granted. This 595,969 is history. It's gone along with the other 237. We also heard David say, uh, or try to convince us, of the uh, Nicholas Joint Venture Group, will also be taking a risk. The difference is, Chair, the risk the Nicholas Joint Venture Group is taking is their own money or money they've raised from, from other places. It's not council taxpayers' money. There's a huge difference in risking private money and risking council taxpayers' money. Also surprised that David was unable to answer convincingly how much the Nicholas Joint Venture Group is buying. He thinks half a million. Surely he should know, you know, but perhaps he'll answer that another time. You know, I, I'm not convinced that Nicholas Joint Venture Group have put that much money in. But anyway, that's, that's you know, what we can say. So, in conclusion, I think the proposal is not unreasonable. However, I think the risk that we're asking council taxpayers to take with their money is unreasonable. I'm going to wrap up right now, Chair, but we'll only use a minute. So, in conclusion, I suppose the question boils down to this. Is this committee content to support the Cabinet decision and gamble with council taxpayers' hard-earned money? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for sticking with it for five minutes. Thank you. I'd now like to call the council leader. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Chair. Um, I just want to make a couple of um, points in, in summation. Um, I do believe this project is a unique opportunity. I do believe that the benefits for Royal and for Boy Lake uh, could be enormous <coughs> in terms of jobs, investment, um, and uh, additional revenue to the borough. I don't accept that none of the benefits will takes my mind back to a piece of work that was done uh, on the back of the last Open Golf Championship at the Royal Liverpool, which showed that the benefit of the local economy was about £17 million. Uh, so I don't accept, I don't accept that point. Um, I think, I think uh, Chair, what this... Sorry. I think, Chair, what this boils down to is what is our appetite for risk? Well, I accept that. That is what is the fundamental core of this decision. In my view, we must be risk aware, but not risk averse. That's my view. I get the issue about the um, 595,000. It is a lot of money. It's council taxpayers' money. We need to um, uh, absolutely every opportunity make sure we spend council taxpayers' money wisely. Just to reiterate the point that's made in the debate chair, 250,000 of that will need to be spent anyway on making sure the landfill site is safe, uh, even if this project can go ahead. But the reality is, if this project is to go anywhere, we need to spend this money to get to the next stage of the process, which is the funding agreement, that, which will come back in, in, in around March of, uh, of, last, of, of next year. Um, the planning process I don't really want to comment on that because, as you've very eloquently said, is a separate process that is done um, objectively and rigorously and is based on planning considerations and um, who can predict what that may or may not um, uh, end up with. But I just want to finish on this point, really. If we don't, if we don't take this decision, uh, Chair, then basically nothing will happen in the And are we really saying that we don't want anything like this to even be explored? It's, for me, it's a council of despair. Yeah. It's basically saying we don't want to take any risks at all. We don't want anything to happen. And frankly, you know, we've been down this road before um, on, on regeneration projects in, in West World. Uh, and, you know, at the same time, people come up to me and complain that all the money's going to elsewhere in the borough. We've got an opportunity here for £190 million project to be in the Western world in Moyle. I just think we would be mad, I think, not to at least take it to the next stage. And the final, final point is, um, if we 
say no to this, then clearly we will not get any of the economic benefits. Uh, we've talked about the importance of giving more young people hope, apprenticeships and all that. But more importantly, Chair, and I'll finish on this, if we don't do projects like this, this council will run out of money by 2020 when we haven't got anything else to rely on other than uh, what we generate ourselves. Um, and the calling, I believe, is fundamentally flawed because it's not a done deal. I hope we've, uh, uh, I've demonstrated that tonight. This is not a done deal. But, but secondly, uh, it's claiming that it's the cabinet's priorities are misplaced. Quite the reverse. We are trying to put projects in place to make sure we have a future. This council has a future. We can deliver. We can continue delivering those vital public services. But thousands and thousands of our residents particularly the most deprived and disadvantaged residents, rely on. So I think it is absolutely the right thing to do, and I appeal to the committee to back the cabinet recommendation and let this project go to the next stage. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I'd just like to make one point of clarity on something Chris Blakely said before about not having the, the full council involved. It was the full council, Chris, that delegated this down to this committee. That's why we're here. That's one of the reasons we're here now, because council delegated it down to this committee. So full council has has been involved with this at all the stages. <coughs> just as a matter of clarity, being non-political as well, just just the same as you, Chris. Non-political. Um, right, I'll open it, open it up to the floor now, but if you want to have something to say, please raise your hand and I'll bring you in. Dave. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you stay. Sorry. You stay. So, no, go on. Go you on, said Dave. Dave. So, go on, Dave. Dave. You, you come in. Bring I'll bring you in. Two seconds, Dave. Yeah, David. David. You. Yes. You. Right. <laughs> um, I, I, I think I've made it quite clear that I, I am persuaded, I have to say, anything that you know, excites the, the will persuaded by it. But I'm not sure that I genuinely believe in a project so large that the sort of Damocles that's just been related to us here, that if we don't agree today to a further half a million pounds spent, that they're not going to go ahead with something which they genuinely believe is going to be a massive profit to them. It's in my, it's in my head I'm struggling with. Say I am struggling. On the one hand, I, I like the idea. On the other hand, I'm just thinking, if we didn't agree it, they'd still go ahead with it. They'd still want to go ahead with it. When you're talking of nearly two hundred million pounds, it must surely be in their interests to spend another half a million in the pre-work. It, it just, in my limited knowledge and brain power on this, there's got to be something here where the council has been put over a barrel, effectively in order to agree this. That's, that, that's my confusion, I have to say. Sorry. They've got it to be signed, Ted. Um, we, we haven't been put over a bat. It we feels like. And, it and, feels and, OK. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, it was the decision of the Mayor to refer the notice of motion to this committee, not the Council. But as I've been, been to Council, the notice of motion was written and presented, but it's the Mayor's decision. Dave, we don't want to get into no, no, the just, just Dave, just I've just got the head of legal services here. Yeah, and the head of legal services has been told me myself that it yeah, came so through exactly, the council. So I know exactly how the process works. Here. So can we, can we continue well, on with the I debate just, instead of semantics, please, not, Dave? Not really, just Time's moving on. Well, I'm just making the point. Given the, the comments that have been made generally throughout in relation, both sides of the argument for and against the, the spending of the money, there's two things that come to mind with me and Nick. Uh, and specifically, the first thing, of course, is that we've got to look at them the first for the common man, because they're the first who are paying for this. And given what's coming up with central government and the possibility of Brexit, Look at what's already happened in the building industry and that they've retracted a lot of places and brought back uh, and not moving forward with the um, projects that have been on the scheme for many years. It's not the first time it's happened to this authority. I can remember 12 keys, I can remember at least three developments, major developments from New Brighton. 
which has been processed and uh, hopefully the council club is going to move forward and it will fail, we've always gone back. Yeah. So it's nothing new for the council, so it's not human blame in that respect. I'm sure there will be other people out there who think that there are opportunities and they should, should be, be taken. Um, again, given the, the information that we've heard throughout this evening, the information that wasn't readily available originally to the cabinet members when they were making decisions, uh, like the site of biological importance and so forth and so on, which is very important, a very important decision for us to look at and make sure. I'm sure the planning committee will pick up all that. That's why I didn't go on in relation to planning issues when I spoke earlier. I am concerned about the whole process and um, I think it would have been better debated by Paul Council to give a full view of what's going on. That's my comment. Thanks, Dave.
going to vote on the one side. Yes. I'll just let ask Sergis to clarify the position. So we're all clear. We're all clear. With the call in, the call in arrangements and procedures have been agreed by council. Um, you are here to hear the call in and consider the evidence in relation to the executive decision that has been called into your consideration. Uh, in the procedure, there are three options.
this proposal onto the next stage. Thank you all.